So we are finalizing our gown. And before we actually begin to put those finishing touches on the gown, I just wanted to go over some of the materials that we're gonna need for our dress. So here I have horse hair. You might have heard this before, horse hair braid. It's this very finely woven um, hem tape that is often used and it's give and it's used to give fullness to a, to a particular um, garment. People use it for hems. It can be used in millinery work. It has such a variety of uses, but it's often used for hems to give it a fullness and to kind of spread out uh, the hem a little bit. It comes in a variety of sizes as well. For this um, particular dress, I'm going to use a one inch just because I want a soft flowing hem and I don't need that majorly wide hem sometimes that you might see. But I also wanted to show that there it comes in like, again, variety of sizes. A lot of dresses you may see done today, especially those mermaid dresses that are really close fitted to the body and kind of span out a little bit. They're used with this wider sort of plastic um, horse hair braid. It comes in soft or harder and it really just depends on the outcome you want of the dress. So I recommend if you can possibly go in and touch and feel before you go ahead and purchase, especially if it's an online purchase, you want to make sure you're getting the results that you want from the horsehair braid. If you get a softer one, those folds are going to be a lot softer. And I would say if you're using a softer horsehair braid, it's because you're attaching it to a softer, lightweight fabric and you don't want it to be worn down or too heavy. Again, so for the sake of our dress though, I'm going to be using this one inch black. Another thing is it comes in a variety of colors. So if you're using a sheer fabric and you have different colors, this works beautifully, especially if the dress flips over or folds, it doesn't show this very contrasting color. You can get a matching color to your garment. Okay. I also have this about 20, 22 inch invisible zipper that I'm gonna add to our dress. And I just wanted you guys to see what that looks like, standard invisible zipper. And lastly, I'm gonna be adding a hook and eye to my dress. Again, hook and eyes do come in different colors, mostly black, I've seen white and I've seen silver, maybe even gold, but I'm pretty sure I've worked in a lot of dresses. You can really pretty much get it in any color. So if your garment is a different color and you want everything to be sort of cohesive and matching, then I would definitely just look to see if you can find a matching color. If not, silver or gold works just fine. So now let's actually get into first putting on our invisible zipper. So we have the dress here and we have it uh, on the right side. So it's on the um, outward facing side. So in order to put in my invisible zipper, I'm going to, I go in and I put it in, in on the wrong side. But what I also do is just to make sure that everything is going to come out nice and even, I based that zipper line. So where my zipper is gonna be, I've just basted it so I know where I'm placing my zipper. I also wanted to show you guys that the dress is open pretty much all the way to the back with the exception of about an inch and then the uh, bottom half or the trumpet half of the skirt is completely sewn up, up the back. That way it's not completely open, but ideally you want, when you're putting in an invisible zipper, you want the back and the entire back open or a majority of the back open because that's just going to make it easier for you to put in that invisible zipper. So again, first I just want to go in to the inside of my dress and I'm just going to kind of pull out my lining and just kind of toss it this way. And that's just going to keep it from getting in the way. So I have my lining pushed away out of the way. And in your notes, I said to connect that uh, panel that you uh, snipped into the waist area. However, you should only do it to the one side until you've actually put your zipper in or you're ready to put your zipper only because it makes it difficult to do this uh, invisible zipper if everything is attached because you have less space to work with. So right now, if I had that attached, I would only have 
just this little bit of space to work with to try to put in my invisible zipper and that would be kind of tricky so I didn't attach it yet but I just wanted to show you in the notes how to do it so let me just so you guys have an idea so this is going to be one side of my dress I take my invisible zipper and with the side facing down Remember, when you're doing the zipper, it's, it, you're going to have it come out this way with the teeth not showing. So sometimes it takes me a minute to remember, but you want to start, for example, this is going to be my left side. So I'm going to attach the right side of my zipper. So on my left side, I'm going to attach it on my right side. I'm going to also follow the basting line that I made. And then I'm just going to take my pin and starting at the very top here. So I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this because we're going to show you how to work that later. So starting at the very top, I'm just going to pin with the pins facing outwardly right on that basting line. I'm going to pin my invisible zipper on. So I want to leave my zipper as wide as possible, giving it as much room to open and that way it securely closes. But you, you can decide that you don't want as long a zipper. You can either purchase one the size you want or you can get a longer one and just cut just so you know that it's accurate. So now you can see the teeth have been, uh, I mean the zipper has been pinned on. And just so you have an idea, this is what it looks like. So you want to make sure the teeth should be visible, but that when you sew it down, you start to lose some of it. So this part should not be visible on the right side of your garment. Like with anything that we've done, based on your skill level, based on how comfortable you feel, you can just go in and just stitch right on that line or you baste first then stitch. So here's a couple of things you should know about when you are machine sewing a, an invisible zipper. One, when you're sewing that zipper, you see my basting line is here. You want to sew away from that line. Why? Because when this is flipped over, you don't want to see the top of the zipper. You want to make sure that this is hidden and has disappeared behind the actual garment like this you want this to be your end result if not if you leave it on that line this is going to be your end result and that's not nearly as nice as if this top part is hidden so you want to make sure that you are creating that basting line but kind of making and also making sure you move away from that line when you're sewing just at the top part also you need to open up the zipper because you can't really sew an invisible zipper with it closed i should probably move the pin let's see if i can okay you want to have it open when you stitch why? Because if you try to stitch the zipper with it closed, it, it, you're not going to be able to get into the very groove. So at your sewing machine, you should be kind of like moving the teeth along and getting into the very groove of the entire stitch. Because the success you're going to have getting into each groove is going to determine how close this is so that when you sew it up, it's literally invisible you can't see it it's just a beautiful uh, seam with just the top of the zipper showing so that's the goal you do it to the one side i definitely always recommend no matter how advanced you are unless you're super advanced to base down the zipper first why because you can kind of test it because you also want to just test it and make sure everything is where it's supposed to be the seams are even because if not you're going to run into issues where you put the whole thing together the invisible zipper looks beautiful and then as you zip it up the top of it is kind of like this 
or there's a weird bunching. So I always say make sure you just baste it and just very slowly stitch right into that groove. When you feel good about it and everything looks the way you want it to look, you do the same thing to the other side, making sure that everything matches up. So for example, once this is machine stitched, you go to the other side, you do the same thing, you baste, but before you machine stitch the other side, zip it up. Zip the whole thing up just to make sure everything is in alignment. If it is, then do the same to the other side. So with the right side of the garment facing up and still with my lining kind of pushed out, I have inserted my invisible zipper. Now I'm just gonna go in and zip it up so we can see what it looks like all zipped up. And there you have it. It just needs to be pressed, but that is what you want. So now that I've put in my invisible zipper, I want to do two things. One, I want to go in and show you guys at the bottom of the zipper. What usually happens is when you're putting an invisible zipper in, um, because you have to do it open, you can't really close that bottom seam and you want to make sure that it's closed so that it smoothly progresses into the zipper. So you don't want like a hole or bunching or buckling. So what you do is you go to the bottom of that seam, you just sew straight up. So for example, if this is the zipper, I don't know if you can see it, wherever that zipper um, stitch ends, you're going to create a follow-up stitch on, in the opposite direction. So you're going to come all the way up and as close as you can get that zipper stitch to meet this. And I just basted it for you to see what it looks like because it's very difficult to see with the black on black. But as close as you can get, for example, this is my zipper stitch. I'm going to create a, a corresponding stitch going up this way and as close as I can get it while still keeping in mind my seam allowance and still following that. Sometimes it meets exactly and it touches and sometimes it doesn't. The point is you want to get it as close as possible so that when you flip it over, it's a seamless um, transition from the zipper to the seam without any holes or buckling or anything like that. So that's how you're going to close up that edge. Because again, when we're putting in our invisible zipper, we have to do it open, but we still need to go back and close up the bottom. So once that's done, now what do we do? We have this lining that is sort of free flowing and there's gonna be a couple of processes you're gonna to use to um, nail down this lining. Now, if you want it for the lining, you can simply take your fabric, turn it over, and where those corresponding, this one came out when I was stitching, but where those corresponding um, basting stitches are versus that stitch, you can go ahead and you can pin it just where that is. You can pin and baste. At about a quarter of an inch away, you can just sew right on top of that basting stitch so that when you um, uh, tunnel it to the other side, it'll be, and this is obviously just a little, it needs to be finished, but you, you get the gist of what this will look like. For me, I like to prick stitch my uh, lining, meaning that, remember that prick stitch that we learned in a couple of lessons, it's the way that we finish the top of this off. I actually like to do it like that because again, it doesn't show a visible stitch and it just gives you more control to make sure that the lining is in place. So it's really up to you how you choose to close this. You Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Videos are uploaded weekly covering dressmaking, fashion, lectures, and more.